Hi, thanks for watching this webinar where we'll be discussing how you can use Rocket Lawyer to complete your estate plan. My name is Jesse Lara and I head up operations for the Legal Benefits team. With me, I would love to introduce you to Amanda Gordon, who will be going over what an estate plan is, why it's important, and how to save your loved ones from a complicated and costly process known as probate. Before I hand it over to Amanda, I would like to take a quick minute to clarify what Rocket Lawyer is, what is included in the legal benefit that is provided to you by your employer. For those that don't know, Rocket Lawyer is a platform that gives you access to easy to use legal tools which help you handle the countless legal undertones to every life event. So whether you are getting married, buying a home, having children, or dealing with a tough landlord, Rocket Lawyer's suite of legal tools can help. Um, from having access to customizable legal documents, to having access to an attorney network that will answer quick questions or provide you with an informative 30 minute consultation, your legal benefit has you covered. Now, for those that don't know, if you don't already have an account, please ask your HR team for your specific claim link, which is typically go.rocketlawyer.com forward slash your company name. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Amanda Gordon. Thanks, Jesse. My name is Amanda Gordon. I'm an attorney in San Francisco, and I practice family law and estate planning. Today, I want to provide you with an overview of how to use Rocket Lawyer for your estate planning needs. But before I get started, I want to make sure I tell you that this presentation contains general legal information and not specific legal advice. This presentation also covers what happens in California, and if you're looking for information about what happens outside of California, you should contact Rocket Lawyer. The most important thing about estate planning is making decisions today so that you have a say in how your future plays out and how your family deals with you if you unexpectedly pass. Estate planning is a morbid topic and often, you know, the last thing on anyone's mind. However, it's really important that you think about what would happen if you unexpectedly pass away. Today I'm going to go through some typical reasons for why people don't want to do estate planning and how Rocket Lawyer can help. The first thing I often hear when people come into my office is they don't have any estate, so they don't need an estate plan. And frankly, most people don't have this castle on a hill. However, just because you don't own this castle doesn't mean you have, don't have an estate. An estate includes everything that you own and everything that you owe. An estate is the net worth of yourself in the eyes of the law. And this includes your bank accounts, your real property, all of your retirement accounts, the cash value of your life insurance, any cars, boats, or other types of vehicles that you own, and any licenses that you have such as copyrights on music that you've created, your Facebook account, your Pokemon Go collection, any other assets that you have in your name. It's important to remember that your estate also includes everything that you owe. This can include your mortgage, your credit card debt, your student loans, and any other liabilities that you have out there, just like your unpaid parking tickets or anything that you have owed to family and friends. The typical reason that I see people saying they don't need an estate plan is that they believe that California law or their state's law will allow their estate to go directly to their spouse and their children. And without going into the specifics, even if that may be true, estate planning is important. It covers what happens if you, you and your spouse both unexpectedly pass away and how your estate gets distributed. The reasons that estate planning are important are especially true in cases where you own real property, whether you own that with a co-owner or you own it outright, if you have rental property, if you have minor beneficiaries, meaning children under the age of 18, if you are taking care of anyone who is dependent, if you or your spouse may lose the capacity to make legal and medical decisions, or if you or your spouse are not a citizen of the United States. The last reason why estate planning is important is if you own out-of-state property or even out-of-county property. Today I'm going to go through three different hypotheticals or use cases for how to use Rocket Lawyer. I find that most people fit into one of these three categories, but if you don't fit into the categories that I discussed today, Rocket Lawyer has two great ways to get in touch. The first is a question and answer feature which allows you to shoot a question to at least five lawyers. 
And the second is the Rocket Lawyer on-call feature, which allows you to have a 30-minute call with a lawyer in your jurisdiction. So the first hypothetical I'm going to go through is for someone who doesn't have children, doesn't own real estate, and has less than $150,000 in assets. This person often doesn't have much, however, they still need an estate plan. If you qualify for this type of circumstance, meaning you have less than $150,000 in assets and you don't own real property, the documents I recommend are three. The will, your last will and testament, which I'm going to go over in a minute, your advanced health care directive, and then three, a durable power of attorney. Then I'm going to talk about this over and over again in this presentation, but if this is you, you need to check your beneficiary designations. If you can take one thing away from this presentation, it's that you should look at the beneficiary designations in your life insurance, your, your retirement accounts, and your bank accounts to make sure that your property is going to the person that you want. What is a last will and testament? So most people have heard of a will. They hear about you know, making a will on your deathbed at the hospital and whether or not that can be held up. Well, a will is a document that tells the, your friends and family how you want your property to be distributed. You can list a, a person to distribute property to or an organization such as a charity. You can also use a will to say that you don't want certain people to inherit your assets. You can use a will to name an executor, which is the person who is going to be responsible for carrying out your wishes in your will. An executor can be your family or it can be a third party who is not a beneficiary of the will. You can also name co-executors or people who are both responsible for carrying out your wishes. You can also use a will to name a guardian for your children. The second document I recommend is an advanced health care directive. On Rocket Lawyer, this document is called a living will. An advanced health care directive is a document where you can appoint someone to make medical decisions on your behalf. It becomes active at your incapacity to make medical decisions, and it also authorizes medical professionals to release confidential information to appointed persons. This can be a crucial document for circumstances that are outside of your control and unexpected. The hospitals often look at these documents to make sure they can communicate with your friends and family according to your wishes. The last document that I recommend is called a durable power of attorney. A durable power of attorney allows you to appoint someone to make financial and legal decisions on your behalf. With a durable power of attorney, a person can write checks on your behalf, sign official documents, and handle other legal matters. If you suddenly lose the capacity to make legal decisions, a durable power of attorney is extremely important as it will allow someone else to help you get out of legal obligations, contracts, and other things which you may no longer be able to remove yourself from. A durable power of attorney can be edited to be valid during your lifetime or after you become incapacitated. The second hypothetical is for the circumstance if you have more than $150,000 in assets. And why this is different is that currently in California, there's something called the Small Estates Administrative Exemption. And this allows you to skip probate if you have less than $150,000 in assets. But if you have more or you own real estate, my recommendation is that you have one more document. And that's called a revocable trust or a living trust. So if you have real estate or more than $150,000 in assets, and that includes the assets in your retirement accounts, then you should have a revocable trust, a will, an advanced health care directive, and a durable power of attorney. And once again, you should check your beneficiary designations to make sure that your assets in those accounts, the ones that have beneficiary designations, are going to the places that you want. Why the revocable trust? Well, it's really important to avoid probate. Probate is a legal process of distributing assets from an estate after death, and the county in which you reside is the place in which probate happens. We like to avoid probate because it's very time intensive. It can take longer than you'd like, most of the time, at least 18 months. The court gets to inventory all of your assets and decide who gets your assets. It's very can be very expensive. There's probate administration fees as well as hiring a lawyer to walk you through the probate process. Probate is very public. You can go down to the courthouse and look at anyone's probate documents to see what they own and they owe and how it's going to be distributed. 
And last, if you unexpectedly pass away, your loved ones will have to deal with the court to be able to access your estate. This can be extremely emotional and often unexpected. People are surprised to learn that they have to use the probate process. And the way to avoid all of these things, the time intensiveness, the expensive nature of it, how it's public, and making sure your family doesn't have to go to the court, is to create what's called a revocable trust. The benefits of having a revocable trust or a living trust on Rocket Lawyer are that you're allowed to nominate multiple people to be the trustees, the people who help administrate the trust. You can use a trust instead of probate and avoid the legal fees and legal costs. And you can keep all information in the trust private. To recap, if you have more than $150,000 in assets, the documents that you'll need are the following. You'll need a revocable trust or a living trust, an advanced health care directive, and a durable power of attorney. And as always, you should check your beneficiary designations. The third hypothetical that I often see for use cases in Rocket Lawyer are the family that has a small child and a house. If this is you, you're probably busy, and you probably haven't had time to do your estate planning, but it's really important. If you have children under the age of 18, the last document you'll need in addition to durable power of attorney, advanced health care directive, will, and revocable trust is something called a guardianship nomination. A guardianship nomination allows you to appoint someone to take care of your children if you and your spouse unexpectedly pass away. In California, if you pass away without a guardianship nomination, the court will appoint someone to take care of your children with respect to their health, education, legal, and financial decisions. Additionally, the court will often freeze your assets in a locked account and ask the guardian to apply for the funds in that account every time they need them to take care of your children. In order to avoid this, you want to create what's called a guardianship nomination. A guardianship nomination will allow a person to be either legally responsible for your child's physical care, health, education, or their financial affairs. You can nominate multiple people, and you can nominate additional people in case your guardian refuses responsibility. As with all of these nominations, the executor, the trustees, and the guardians, you want to notify the people that you've nominated just to make sure they're aware of who, what their responsibilities could be in the event that you unexpectedly pass away. And you may want to consider planning for contingencies, appointing more than one person in case someone refuses. To recap, if you have children and real estate, the documents that you'll need, which can be found on Rocket Lawyer, are the following a guardianship nomination, a durable power of attorney, advanced health care directive, a will, and a revocable trust. Now that we've gone through three different use cases, I'm going to give you some key takeaways so that you can use Rocket Lawyer to plan for your estate. First, you should figure out what you own and owe. Rocket Lawyer has a document called the Estate Planning Checklist, which gives you a bunch of categories that you can fill in to decide what you own and what you owe. Second, you should definitely double check your beneficiary designations on your life insurance, retirement accounts, and bank accounts to make sure that those accounts are going to the people that you want. Third, you should work with Rocket Lawyer to get the appropriate documents in place. If you're confused or if you have any questions about which documents to start with, Rocket Lawyer's question and answer feature on the right-hand side of the page is an excellent way to start the process. You can also set up a 30-minute phone call to check with a lawyer to make sure that you're using the appropriate documents. And last, if your estate contains anything complicated, like real estate out of the state of California, you have minor beneficiaries that have special needs, or if you're not a United States citizen. Last, if you just don't have the time and energy to deal with it, you should go to Rocket Lawyer and schedule a free consultation with an estate planning and attorney. Hey Amanda, thanks for going through that. Um, you and I have been doing these sessions at, at various companies throughout the Bay Area, and what I've noticed is there's a couple of common questions that pop up, um, so I kind of want to address them now. 
and uh, we'll, we'll go through them. So the first one uh, I commonly hear is, uh, what do I do with the documents once they are created? Do they have to submit them to the county, to the state? Like, what are generally the, the next steps there? Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, that question gets asked most frequently. And Rocket Lawyer actually provides what's called a legal checklist at the end of every single document creation, which gives you instructions on what to do with the documents next. Most of the time with the state planning documents, Rocket Lawyer will suggest that you print the documents out and you have them notarized, and then you distribute those documents to everyone you've named as a trustee, guardian, or an executor. You want to make sure you keep these documents both in soft copy and hard copy and consider using a safe deposit box. Awesome. And another one that usually follows up with that one that I've noticed is what happens if I want to make edits and how often do I need to make edits? That's a great question too. So every time you have a major life event, whether that's the birth of a child, you purchase a new house, you get divorced, or if someone in your family passes away and you've inherited assets, you want to make changes to your estate plan just to make sure that they're consistent with your current situation. Rocket Lawyer actually allows you to make edits to the estate planning documents you've created. You're going to want to make edits and then go through the entire process, finalize the documents, print them out again, get them notarized. But Rocket Lawyer allows you to make edits to your estate plan when you have an account with Rocket Lawyer, whether that's through your company or if you sign up for an individual account with Rocket Lawyer after you leave your company. Cool. And, and the last one that's really more addressed to me that I've heard from employees is, what if I leave my company? What happens to my documents? So Rocket Lawyer is, is going to act similarly to like a Dropbox for your documents. So once you create them, you'll always be able to access them. The only thing that you lose in the event that you leave your company is the feature set. So you'll lose the ability to ask attorney questions. You'll lose the ability to edit documents. But in terms of accessing what you already have created, that's going to be there for you. However, if you do go to a different company that happens to provide the benefit, we'll just go ahead and swap over your membership to that company's membership. Or alternatively, you could always subscribe for one of our consumer plans. But as I mentioned, at best, you're just going to be able to access your documents. Yeah, and actually we have one more question I think that I get asked a lot is I've already created my estate planning documents with another provider, either an attorney or another online service. Can I edit those documents with Rocket Lawyer or what should I do? And Rocket Lawyer actually allows you to say that you've revoked or you're creating a new will or trust or whatever document you've created. And so even if you have previous documents, you can use Rocket Lawyer to create new documents and you know, move from there. All right. Appreciate it, Amanda. Thanks for going through the estate planning 101 session. And just again, to reiterate, Amanda Gordon practices law in California. So if you're a California-based employee and have additional questions that came up as a result of watching this webinar, you could go ahead and shoot Amanda a quick email to amanda at gordonfamilylaw.com. Additionally, if you have questions on how to use Rocket Lawyer or a little bit confused on how to set up your account, shoot an email to benefitsupport at rocketlawyer.com and we'll be more than happy to help you. Lastly, if there's questions and you just want to start off with a quick question, you could always go to rocketlawyer.com forward slash ask dash a lawyer dot rl. And appreciate you guys joining us today. Have a good one.